the Senate having tried Donald John Trump, President of the United States, upon two articles of impeachment exhibited against him by the House of Representatives, and two-thirds of the senators present not having found him guilty of the charges contained therein. It is therefore ordered and adjudged that the said Donald John Trump be, and he is hereby, acquitted of the charges in said articles. The Senate has acquitted Trump on two articles of impeachment, abuse of power and obstruction of justice that were put forward by the Democratic House. Now, clearly, the Democrats should have put more into impeachment. There should have been the violation of the Emoluments Clause, multiple violations of the Emoluments Clause, uh, financial crimes, kids separated from families at the border and put in cages. There are so many things that could have been added to impeachment that never were. But regardless, the final vote on this impeachment in the Senate or the, the trial in the Senate was 48 to 52 and 47 to 53. The Senate needs 67 votes to convict on either article. So clearly the numbers were not there. Now, the discrepancy here, so you see 48, 52, 47, 53. The discrepancy here is that Mitt Romney voted guilty on the first article. So let me show you. Uh, so his entire speech is about like eight minutes long. I'm going to show you just a taste of it in why he decided to uh, vote guilty when it came to the first article. The grave question the Constitution tasks senators to answer is whether the president committed an act so extreme and egregious that it rises to the level of a high crime and misdemeanor. Yes, he did. The president asked a foreign government to investigate his political rival. The president withheld vital military funds from that government to press it to do so. The president delayed funds for an American ally at war with Russian invaders. The president's purpose was personal and political. Accordingly, the president is guilty of an appalling abuse of public trust. What he did was not perfect. No, it was a flagrant assault on our electoral rights, our national security, and our fundamental values. Corrupting an election to keep oneself in office is perhaps the most abusive and destructive violation of one's oath of office that I can imagine. All right. So that's a little taste. I'll link to his full speech below the video under sources if you actually want to watch the full thing. But look, upon first glance, it may appear like Mitt Romney is really standing strong here and, you know, really taking it to, to Trump and, and ensuring that, yes, Trump, you did something wrong. I'm going to speak out about it. And look, yeah, you can give him some credit for this. There's obviously pressure within his own caucus. There's obviously pressure from from uh, voters that want him to to uh, acquit Trump. But the reality is, he's from Utah. Utah, where he's fairly popular. Now, yes, there is some recent news saying Trump is more popular in Utah than Mitt Romney is. That said, uh, if there's any state where a senator is able to vote to uh, vote guilty on Trump, it would be Utah with um, uh, the heavy Mormon population being in support of Mitt Romney, who's also a Mormon. And at the same time, I mean, even putting that aside, Mitt Romney isn't up for re-election until 2024. By that time, I think he's betting that Trump is going to be a distant memory. And he may be right. So it's a, I guess you could say it's still a bit of a gamble. But ultimately, he wouldn't be doing this if he was up for re-election this term. And he wouldn't be doing this if he wasn't from Utah and has, you know, a strong base of support there. So while he deserves, I guess, some credit here, the reality is the situation allowed him to uh, vote guilty on, I guess, one article. I'm not sure. Again, like if you watch his whole speech, he talks about how he's going to get, you know, there's going to be backlash and everything. Why not just vote guilty on both? That's a different discussion. Let me show you the initial reaction, <laughs> at least from one person um, in the Trump camp. Donald Trump Jr. tweeted out, Mitt should be expelled from the Senate GOP conference. If this is the path they take, go right ahead. <laughs> Nobody is going to complain from the Democratic side about that. Go right ahead. Um, and even though, okay, even though impeachment failed and by all indications, it was going to with Republicans controlling the Senate. The Democratic 
party still had to go through with impeachment. It was a good thing that they did because you have to hold some kind of standard for the president. Now, again, clearly they should have put more into impeachment, but if they didn't push to impeach on anything, when all I mean, when there was countless reasons to impeach Trump, I think it would have suppressed a lot of the energy in the Democratic base. Not necessarily the part of the base that is really excited about candidates like, or really just uh, excited about Bernie Sanders, but there is there are many voters. I know you may not be this this person, and you may not know anyone like this, but there are many voters who are very focused on impeachment and Trump. Many Democratic voters, and if you just completely ignore that part of the base, it wouldn't help the party, especially when all the evidence is on the side of the Democratic Party. All the evidence, uh, all the facts show that Trump is a criminal. So to just completely ignore that would be stupid. So even though impeachment failed in the Senate, it was a good thing that held some kind of standard for what the president can and can't do. And on top of that, this will be like the fact that it failed in the Senate will be energizing a lot of those voters that I'm talking about will be energizing a lot of them to come out and vote against Trump in the general election, regardless of the candidate. So that is also a great thing. So even though impeachment failed, ultimately, this was the right path for the Democratic Party to take. I just wish they put a lot more into impeachment than just the call to Ukraine.